we'll, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, we have uh, two items that we're going to, well, we, we have uh, pr potentially two items we're going to discuss. I will let everyone know that House Bill 669, I think, was on our agenda. Is that mm -hmm. correct? If I have the bill number. The author has asked for additional time uh, to uh, work on his measure, and we are certainly going to grant uh, him time to do that. We will, um, as, as days are running short uh, toward getting uh, items uh, moved forward, we will look to have this committee meet um, post-session on Monday uh, in order to give um, the gentleman time to have his measure heard before a full committee uh, and the opportunity for a vote at that time. So 669 will wait. Um, I am um, the primary author of House Bill 920, uh, and I am interested in moving that item along during uh, this legislative session. However, our presentation today is uh, going to talk to us a bit about the, the current reporting that's done. Uh, and so I think in, in the interest of, of a, a fair uh, airing of that, that bill, um, I would like to, to ask the committee's indulgence to, to hear this presentation. Uh, and then um, I'm going to ask you for your candid comments relative to do we think we need to work on 920 after what we've heard today. And if the committee wishes to do that, then I would take that uh, into advisement, do that over the weekend, and also hear that on Monday uh, afternoon. If we feel like we can move forward on 920, I'd turn over um, the meeting to our vice chairman at that point and, and present 920 and ask the committee to move forward at that time. But again, I'll, I'll go with the will of the body at that time uh, or after the presentation. Laura, if you would come forward and forgive me, tell me your last name again. Laura Wheeler uh, from Georgia State University uh, is going to have a presentation. We had a, a technical uh, hitch in our uh, uh, deal this afternoon, so we won't be putting that on the wall. Um, we're going to try to get the handouts to the committee members, and if we have those in the audience, uh, we'll, we'll try to do that. Would it help? While Ms. Wheeler and, um, is handing this out, I just remind the, the subcommittee and those in the audience that uh, we seek in 920 to address a, an extension, really, of the tax uh, expenditure review um, that is addressed in, in Code Section 451279. Um, the report um, is which Ms. Wheeler and, and the group at Georgia State provide for us. So I thought it would be uh, wise. I think uh, someone asked at the last meeting, you know, what what is in that report. So we're we're going to allow her to give us that presentation and um, then move forward with any questions uh, relative to that before we go to to 9:20. Uh, we do need you to go with the microphone because they are streaming us. So if you, you can hold it like a rock star or put it on the podium, whatever uh, you like. To uh, a classroom full of students, so I tend to be able to keep them awake. But uh, so uh, thank you for, uh, for having us here today. We really do appreciate this opportunity to, um, to, to show you what is, what is in the existing tax expenditure report. And we are uh, happy to... Uh, to entertain suggestions about how we can make this document more useful to you. Um, and so we have, we have done this tax expenditure report now for two years. This is our, this is our second year, and, and the first year was clearly a work in progress. And uh, the second year was, you know, we were really getting our feet under us and un understood what, what we wanted to accomplish with it in terms of, of getting, getting out this document. But there is now... Now that we've had some uh, perspective in doing that, uh, I have a personal wish list of things that I'd like to do to that document. And then uh, our job is, of course, to provide information to you. And so uh, we'd like to know how it would be most useful for, for your work. Um, so it is prepared annually by the Fiscal Research Center at Georgia State University. But it, uh, we receive funding for that from the Department of Audits. Um, and then it is published uh, with, along with the governor's uh, budget. And so you would find the document in your handout. It has this lovely uh, hyperlink, <laughs> uh, extremely catchy. It goes for three lines almost. Uh, 
And, uh, but if you go to the first page of OPB and you look on the right, there are the quick links. And it's right there on the right, the, uh, 2000, the fiscal year 2013 tax expenditure report. And it is, uh, that's where you would find the tax expenditure report. It's not on the Fiscal Research Center website. It's not on the audit's website. But that's, that's where it is. And it is available, we turn it in end of middle of December each year for the last two years. We have turned it in the middle of December, so it's ready when the governor uh, has all his stuff uh, available on the website. It's ready as well. It's a separate document. There's a page in the budget that gives reference to the tax expenditure report, but it is a separate document in and of itself, uh, but published a long time, uh, along the same timelines as the budget. Um, it includes over 300 provisions. Every tax that is uh, that the state is, has authority over uh, is included in that budget. Individual, corporate, including the federal conformity bills, uh, the c c federal federal conformity provisions. So our individual income and our corporate income piggyback on the federal uh, individual and corporate. And so, to the extent that we adopt those provisions. Our exposure is listed in there as well. That was not in the first year's expenditure report, but it is in the second, and it will be in future, um, in future reports. The sales tax exemptions are in there, uh, including, where possible, the local effect. Um, the insurance premium tax provisions are in there. The, um, that is not, that's not a tax that's collected by Department of Revenue, but it does go to the general fund. And uh, the Insurance Commission's office was happy to work with us, and so that's, that's also in there. Uh, motor fuels, alcohol, tobacco, and the, the banking tax, the financial institution's tax is in there as well. All right, so every, every tax is listed in there. We, don't, we do not have at this time data to estimate all the provisions. But we do, uh, we do estimate a lot of them. Uh, we're on a trend, a two-year trend, <laughs> and that uh, each year we're estimating more and more. Um, but uh, we don't estimate all of them, but we are, we are gaining. Um, in the report, if you've not seen it, we're going to, we include the statutory reference so you know where in the code is listed. What are the, you know, some kind of description of the, of the expenditure, um, the date of enactment, the, the effective date, so when it was passed and when it was going to, and when it's going to be coming to play. Uh, also, any sunset dates are, are usually listed in there. Um, we have an estimate of, uh, for three years, for three fiscal years, and then we uh, cite our data and how appropriate that data source is to this, to estimate this provision. Some data sources are more appropriate for this purpose than others, but we don't always have the best available data. It just doesn't exist in some cases. Um, for example, there are sales tax exemptions, for example, on food. Well, you don't pay sales tax on food, so we don't know how much is not being paid. We use an outside source to, to look at how consumers how much uh, money is spent by consumers on food, and then uh, look at that on a per person basis, have an estimate of the population of Georgia by various income groups, and then use that to estimate what Georgia might be uh, losing in terms of the sales tax exemption for food. All right, uh, so DOR provides a lot of information for us. The, all the tax credits, uh, individual and corporate tax credits, are coming straight from DOR now. Uh, that wasn't always in the past, uh, but DOR has, has um, made tremendous strides and been very good to work with in terms of providing this information and provides a lot of information and, and spends, uh, spends a good amount of time uh, not only providing the information for this purpose, but um, working with us to make sure we've got descriptions correct and, and 
make sure we, we are in, interpreting everything correctly. We have a good, good relationship with DOR in that regard. Um, we, we started this year because there's a second year. Any kind of differences between the two, the first and second report, and we'll continue that process. So if somebody's looking at the report from previous years, sees a big difference in the estimate, we're going to we're going to discuss why that might be the case. Sometimes there are changes in the law that causes uh, a change in the expenditure estimate, and sometimes it's going to be an update in in new data, uh, and sometimes it's going to be um, a, a new a new way of thinking about the estimate and how we do the estimate. We're not going to we're not going to do that frivolously, but if if we think that we haven't been capturing the estimate correctly in the past then it doesn't make sense to keep doing it incorrectly in the future just to be consistent. Uh, there will be times when we're going to learn. Um, like I said, there are over 300 provisions, and we're estimating all of them individually. So uh, we're becoming experts on every single minute sales tax exemption, and there are a number of them. Uh, and so it, it takes, there is some of that process going on. Um, the next slide talks about the sources of revenue. So Department of Revenue is used whenever possible. All right, so uh, if it's an individual provision, we're going to do that. We're going to go to them first. Uh, and for credits, like I said, they have been able to provide a lot of information. Uh, for exemptions, they are able to provide a lot of information because we have uh, a microfile of taxpayer returns from from Department of Revenue. It's been stripped of any identifiers, but it does give, you know, what the Social Security exemption would be for this, you know, taxpayer A, and that's all we'd know is taxpayer A, and we'd know what their tax liability is and what their federal AGI is, and we could look at their exemption level for, for example, the Social Security income that they received. And so, uh, we have that information for exemptions and credits, but we don't have that for the um, federal provisions that we conform to. So uh, there are a number of um, provisions that we accept because um, uh, we piggyback with the feds, and uh, we do not have the federal IRS file for Georgia taxpayers. We only get the state uh, file. So various sources of income that are exempt at the federal level uh, that are reported but not taxed, we would not have that. Um, we also get um, a very good file from the department, from the insurance commissioner, and uh, uh, that pretty much takes care of the exemptions that are associated with the insurance premium tax. Uh, for the federal provisions that we can conf that we conform to, the um, Congress has a committee, um, a staff, the Joint Committee on Taxation, and they provide um, expenditure estimates for the, uh, uh, at the federal level for all the federal provisions. We you know, pick off those that, that we need to look at, that, that we also conform to. We take those federal estimates, think about how they represent some share of Georgia. It varies by provision and then we'll, we'll share that down to, uh, to represent Georgia. Uh, and then we use all sorts of other sources, uh, a lot of census data, a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, data from Bureau of Labor Statistics and things like that. All the estimates, all the estimates, including those that are based on data from Department of Revenue, are indeed estimates. The latest data that we have for, from the Department of Revenue is 2009, uh, and that's always going to be the case. It, it takes there's, there's always a lag uh, for for the Department of Revenue to uh, people file extensions um, and amended returns. So it's going to take time for those for those records to be closed and then cleaned and then given to us. So. We're doing the tax experience report for fiscal year 2013, and the most recent data we have is for calendar year or tax year 2009. So all of them, even if they're based on Georgia tax return data, have to at least be forecasted out to the future all right, for several years. So that's important to understand that they're all estimates. Um, 
and that everything's estimated separately. Every provision we have to go through individually. We have a, now that we've done this a couple of times, we have a system for each of them. And, um, but since we've only done it a couple of times, we're still working on that system for, for each of them. And, and uh, some, some more than others, but we're working on that system. Um, as far as House Bill 920, uh, it has several, several components to it. Uh, one is to state the objective of the expenditure and then to evaluate the effectiveness of the expenditure. Uh, there's uh, a, uh, an idea of a distributional analysis uh, and then an analysis of the beneficiaries. And then it also, it also uh, has a statement about the uh, administration of the revenue. I have to say, I, I, that's, really, that's really DOR and, and, and their, uh, their bailiwick. And uh, they are well, well positioned to handle that and would be happy to do so. Uh, they're not here to defend themselves, so I'm going to say that they can take care of, of that they're going to be responsible for that. Um, in terms of the ob objective of, um, in terms of the objective of the expenditure, uh, in, in terms of how we would do that, um, of course, every bill has a preamble, you know, at the front of it, and so we could simply take that, uh, some, some, you know, short paraphrase of from that. And have that as the has as the purpose. So we could we could do that. Um, it's a little more challenging for older bills. Some of these uh, pieces of legislation that are in the expenditure report have been in in our codified in our tax law for decades. Yes, and and so uh, we'd need to. I, I don't even know how to find those bills, but I'm sure a lost you know law student or someone could, could help us out there. Uh, but we could do that. But I'm not sure that that's exactly what you're looking for. But as my first reaction, that's, that's how I would implement that statement in terms of what is the purpose of this. Uh, it would be inappropriate for me to sit at my desk and to go through these various provisions and then for me to write down what is the purpose, right? That's not my job, that's your, your job. And so at best what I could do is to take a stab at it and then some group would, would, would say, yes, this is what we, what we think is the purpose. Um, and uh, my initial stab would be to look at the preambles of the, of the legislation that, that we can get our hands on. All right. Now, other states have done this. Oregon's done this. So, you know, the, they have an ado adoption credit. So they put for their purpose to, you know, uh, facilitate the expenses associated with adoption. That's it. All right? And so uh, there's not a huge amount of revelation in, in the way it's currently implemented. Uh, I think... What you really want is the is the um, is the second part, which is to evaluate the expenditure. Which you know, if you, if you can't evaluate unless you know its purpose. And so, if if that's what we're really wanting to do, that is, I mean, you're absolutely right. That is the critical issue: is to think about what are the purposes of all these expenditures that we have. There's a whole bunch of them that we're, things that we're not taxing. Some are obvious, some are not, and you're looking at them and thinking, why, do, why is this still in here? It, maybe at some point in time there was a rationale, but it doesn't it ex exist now, and maybe because it's old, uh, you're giving preferential treatment to one group that you're not giving to another. Those are all uh, extremely important things to, to look at, to consider, uh, and it's, it's one of the, the strengths that, of a tax expenditure, just to put everything on the table and, and show, just to list it all, uh, that here's all the things that we're doing. Well, why are we doing this expenditure and we're not, we're not taking care of this group or, or let's not, you know, let's not, you know, 
uh, give this kind of treatment to either groups kind of things. And, how, and who within a group, you know, how uh, wealthy are, are some of these uh, individuals or how low income are some of these individuals that are receiving various credits or exemptions? Is that where we want our tax dollars to be? That is for you all to decide. But I think that's the question that, that we want to look at in terms of evaluation. That gets to be, uh, in implementing it, can be very difficult, right? So there are kind of two things. There are two things that we could do. One is look at the distributional analysis of some credits that we, that we have currently uh, or some exemptions like the Social Security exemption uh, for, or the exemption for Social Security income or the retirement exemption that we have. And we can show, uh, you know, who, who is claiming that exemption and what are their various income levels. We could do that, all right? It would be using, if we did it this year, 2009 data, all right? Now, in the case of the retirement exemption, that's a little tricky because it was still at 35000 back then. And so uh, there is a lag, you know, for these provisions that phase in over time, showing the distributional effect given old data may not capture the, the distributional effect that's going to be reflected in the expenditure estimate. Uh, take, for example, the um, qualified education uh, tax credit that we have. Uh, if you look at the preamble, you're going to see that the, if we were to take that as the purpose, it would be to benefit students uh, who um, uh, uh, receive scholarships through these uh, scholarship funds. All right? But who we would be able to distribute uh, and show a benefit to would be those who take the credit. Right? So those taxpayers that are receiving the credit is what we would be able to distribute from DOR data in the tax expenditure report. I thought they would get the credit. They're not receiving the benefit, are they? Well, that's, that's my point. If you want to say, as the preamble does, that the benefit is to the students, we're going to have information on who receives the credit. Right? And so there is, if, if you want to say these are the beneficiaries, the distribution analysis would be on those who receive the credit. Or in that case, it's the taxpayers that say that it was argued that it would be the taxpayers. So that, that legislation came about before we got here. Uh, I'm not, I'm not but, picking up, but it's a... My point is that the, the argument, as I understand it, for that particular piece of legislation was the taxpayer was going to go to And if that's, that's what we would be able to show. Okay. That's what we would be able to show. So uh, I see your point, though. To identify who is benefiting, and that, that, that it would be open for discussion. Yes, uh, and as is the purpose of that bill, would be open to discussion. All right. So, what is the purpose? All right. So, I don't want to take that on. <laughs> that's that's that is beyond just one person sitting at their desk uh, making those calls. All right, that is, that is not an appropriate place for a nonpartisan analyst. All right, so what I can provide is the distributional analysis of various credits and who takes them. All right, that may or may not match with the beneficiaries. Uh, we can do some analysis uh, on some expenditures relating to sales tax exemptions, for example. I'm sorry, did you have a question? Well, Excuse I me. I want to kind of wait, but I wanted, you spoke about education and the tax credits. Could you also interpret, or do you get into showing who did not benefit or how it might have hurt no. any other area? No, sir, we do not. We would have information on who takes the credit and and what their, what their Georgia AGI is and how much they took. That's what we would have information on. So basically you, you have the facts of yes. what it was, the purpose of it. 
uh, not necessarily the purpose of, but where it was used. Yes, that's right. That's right. But in exa if, if I can, you know, absolutely. I think this may have been subject to litigation. I think it's decided now. I won't get into that. But before I was in the legislature, there was passed a porch tax credit, and for a number of years. Uh, that tax credit was in, in the it was something if your your traffic at the savannah port increased a certain percentage year over year mm -hmm. you were able to take some form or some amount of credit right and some years pay, and that was import export that's how that credit went because again the gentleman uh former member of the house uh former judiciary chairman tom bordeaux from savannah had had passed that legislation and i spoke on the phone with him when some things were going on that the purpose of that was to increase port traffic in Savannah and drive the Georgia economy. Mm -hmm. There came to be a situation where a large import, a large amount of port traffic was increased due to imports, and the Revenue Department looked, and the preamble read port traffic, or I'm sorry, the preamble export. read export traffic. Mm -hmm. The bill was silent to the whether it was import or export, and, and thereby then there was litigation. I, I don't honestly remember how it how it uh, filtered out and finished, but that's what you're getting at. The, the, the purpose, if you were to analyze that, would have been to Im increase the, the export. We would have picked it, up on exports. You would have picked up on export because of the preamble. Yeah. Right. But the, the real reason was to to increase port traffic, and you would right. have taken that to be export. And then you would be able to see from the credits given how much, you know, export traffic, the the port increased for the amount of credit that was given, and and could we then not take and, and extrapolate from there and figure, well, if the port traffic increased, you know, tenfold or this many tons or ever how they measure containers, then the, the, somebody has a model. I'm sure you do at Georgia State or, or they do somewhere that you can tie additional jobs and ec economy economic impact to that increase in port traffic because I think what we would like to do mm -hmm. is then look back and say if port traffic increased 10 percent so that was 10 tons I don't know the right you know metrics yeah, yeah. to describe but in, increased by X and therefore that cost us Y dollars mm -hmm. was the economy in Savannah and Georgia as, in general increased by two times Y if it was mm -hmm. one could argue that's a good that was a good credit we gave a dollar yep. away, we got at least two dollars back. If we look at it and we say we gave a dollar away and we only got 50 cents back, we may want to look at that because it costs too much to increase port traffic. That, perhaps that's a bad example, but no, that's it, what it, I'm trying to get to. And that's, and that's for a great all example. Of these credits. Uh, and it's, and it, 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 you're right, it is the important thing. I would argue <laughs> that the tax expenditure report um, tells you only where to start looking. Okay, right. Right? But. But then that question needs to be answered in another in another venue, right? Uh, I'm sorry. Yes. Thank you. I appreciate what you've been telling us, and I appreciate the intent of this bill. Um, it's on. Um, I can talk. Well, I'm just being Thank you. Um, but my question is, you mentioned tax exemptions and tax credits and how we can evaluate those. Mm -hmm. And there's been so much discussion about how important it is for us to be able to uh, try to increase the revenues in the state of Georgia, especially right now. And my question is, in addition to evaluating our tax expenditures, are you able to evaluate tax exemptions and tax credits and how much benefit they actually give to the state for what we are giving up in revenue. Well, I, I think there, there are two sides of the same uh, the same uh, issue that, that Representative Martin's bringing up. And so I, I would say that the tax expenditure report is going to uh, is going to show you where to start looking for those bigger ticket items. All right? Not not to not to say that you know in, in the in the perfect world all provisions ought to be evaluated but I would suggest that initially you'd want to focus on larger uh, credits uh, but with the idea that what, you, what I think what you want to do is, is a maybe a separate set of studies on you don't you don't need that kind of evaluation every year right and to do it 
it takes a lot uh, time and data resources. It's pretty sophisticated econometrically to do that and to get an answer that you have confidence in. All right, but uh, so it's it's something that I want to say is beyond the scope of the tax expenditure report, but that is clearly what y'all need to know. All right. And so I don't mean to, to dodge the bullet or pass the buck or anything, but uh, it, is, it is more than what you would see in a tax expenditure report. Some, uh, I know Oregon does an evaluation. Uh, they'll call it an evaluation in their report. And they'll say, for example, there's the um, extra deduction uh, that you get or, uh, if you're blind or disabled. And so what Oregon does is then uh, go to the Health and Human Services director and say, write up some, you know, something about this credit. Is it, or I'm sorry, this exemption. Is it is it helping? Is it useful? And so that director writes up, you know, in their experience, what is uh, how how this works and is it useful? And so in most cases, they're going to say it's useful. Uh, it, it does this. They may offer uh, ways to target it. Right? But they're not going to address who isn't getting helped by it. They're not going to address how uh, these funds might be, um, what other funds in the state budget are, are going for the same purpose. And so this program may be working, but are there some other funds and are they working better? And it doesn't talk about how uh, the program might be revamped. Is this the only way to do this? that is the most effective way. They don't really address that. They just pretty much have a couple of paragraphs about what is being done. Now, there's a lot, there can be some useful information in that, in that you're hearing from that director uh, some firsthand experience, and that can be quite useful. Uh, but it's not going to address the issue of what's Georgia's perhaps return uh, in terms of these credits that we're allowing. It's, it's not that kind of detail analysis. What you're looking for is critical, but it is, but it is a study that is beyond the scope of the tax expenditure report. Uh, it's, it, it is really important to do. It takes more time, all right? And so uh, there are ways to do it, but they're technically uh, sophisticated and complex. Um, and, and it's not something that's done quite like the tax expenditure report. May I follow up with one more question? Um, in the past, when Georgia has uh, put in place uh, either tax exemptions or tax credits for whatever reason, and it seems that since I've been in the House, often it's been to bring in new jobs, mm -hmm. bring in new businesses, bring in you know, new revenues to the state of Georgia. Have we ever followed up to see whether or not that these tax exemptions and tax credits are actually doing what we thought they would do? Have any bills required that? And have you done that for any of them? Or it's, has it never been done? Uh, let, me, let me answer it on two levels. One, for each taxpayer, as they apply for the jobs tax credit, they must verify that they meet the employment thresholds and continue to meet the employment thresholds that are required under that law in order to receive the credit. All right, so they do that, and they, and they do that validation with the Department of Revenue. Uh, now, on an aggregate basis, uh, some kind of general follow-up, uh, we've had the job tax credit for so many years and we've created this many jobs each year, that kind of thing. Uh, we have had not had that ability, and we at Georgia State have not done that. It's not included in the tax expenditure report. Uh, Department of Revenue is um, implementing their integrated tax system, and that allows for more of that information to be easily accessible. And so uh, there is some of that that could be um, well, that we could at least say, you know, the job tax credit had, you know, 500 jobs associated with it this year. Now, I, th I think what you also want to think about, though, is how many of those jobs would have occurred in the, in the state without the credit versus how many are attributable just to, the, just to the credit. That is where this other type of analysis would be able to be useful. All right. DOR can provide, uh, as I understand now, 
some information on that. And, they, and as I understand, they were not able to provide that before, but their new system allows, allows that. And they do check up on this. I, the companies have to, have to uh, submit verification that, yeah, they're meeting the, the job requirements under their credit. Uh, but the, the bigger question about how many of those would have occurred anyway, just because we're expanding and, and a, a dynamic economy, uh, that's not going to be revealed in simply reporting those numbers. Okay? Thank you. I, I think what you're saying, and I'll, I don't want to stop you in the middle, but the, the current tax expenditure report, and, and even with the additional items that we're requesting to include uh, through HB 920, is still a starting point. Yes, sir. Is, is still something to look at. But I don't know, for those of y'all that um, have a copy, I think she handed them out around the room, of this expenditure report. I mean, it's eye-opening to look inside at, at, at what you know, the, some of the things and the numbers are and, and all of the calls that we would get should they should, should this exemption go away. But it, it's worthy to look at because, I mean, I, I'm looking at one. I won't even pick out which one it is. But there's an exemption to sales and use tax that these are estimates, I understand, right, yes, yes. Uh, based on the 2009 numbers. But in ex one exemption on sales and use tax costs the state $1.4 billion. Now, that would be if you put sales and use tax on a form of labor, you know, a, a service form huge number mm -hmm. if we were to come and take that exemption we would be inundated with calls how dare you tax this it, it would have to be tied to oh by the way if we do that now we can go to a state sales tax of four to you know to three i mean that would almost pay for going from four to three if, if my members what are we six seven and a half billion sales tax is that is that about right? Yeah, I, I guess what I so it wouldn't we wouldn't quite do that, but I mean I, I'm just saying if you were if you added some things into the tax base, mm -hmm. you could in fact reduce the the sales the state sales tax everywhere else. Now there, there's a certain amount of distrust out in the community if you take that exemption, you know, away and you cut the, your rate, you can always go back up on your rate, and then my exemption will be there. So those those are all political questions to have, but what is asked further is talk to the distribution basically how this um, exemption or this tax credit affects those others that are not exempt or not receiving credit. We, we would be able to create a numerator denominator situation and do so that analysis, correct? We would, I'm sorry, could you say it well, one more I mean, time? It, it just said on line 18 it says an analysis uh, tax expenditures uh, effect on the distribution you know, so we would basically know we would say hey overall we you know get 10 billion in taxes but there's a billion that's not being taken in because of this credit if you were to add it back you and keep everything the same you could have a 10 percent overall reduction i guess i guess i would be hesitant to to say how you would what the implications would be to revenues uh if you added things back into the base, would you reduce rates? Would you uh, expand services? That's beyond that's beyond for me to say. Right, that's a policy decision. Right. All we would be able to look at if we get this information is what percentage of the tax base is made up by these. I mean, we had it last year, and the number doesn't jump out of my head, but I mean, when you look at all of the exclusions to the sales tax mm -hmm. system, I mean, it was a significant number. Um, do you uh, remember what that was? If they're all totaled up? No, but I know the I know the yeah. figure. Yes, as it was it was significant, and uh, I guess um, again I, I think for the purpose of a tax expenditure report, you, you want to uh, focus on the individual provisions. Sure. If if we were to, you know, I think there is a, a need perhaps for. Uh, you know other things on you know broadening the sales tax base, but I'm I'm not sure that that uh, belongs in the tax expenditure report. Uh, we don't. Um, I have to say I, I did. I was concerned about it getting too 
uh, long and cumbersome uh, that, that people would be, get lost in it. We, we try and make it uh, as user-friendly as possible. Um, but I, I think what you're, what you're realizing is there are lots of other things. You look at this information and lots of other questions come to mind. And I'm not sure they all belong in the tax expenditure report. They certainly need to be addressed. And, uh, and, and you know, we would be happy to put in the tax expenditure what, what we can. I guess when I was thinking of distributional analysis, so I was thinking of uh, for an individual provision. You know, and we could think about who might benefit from that exemption. If we had information on their AGI, we could, you know, th this individuals in this AGI, um, there are 5,000 of them, and here's the value of their exemption. There are some more individuals in this AGI, and there are 20,000 of them, and here's their, uh, the value of, of what they take. And so more of on an individual basis. Um, I, th I think we can do that. That does not get at all of the things that you're that you're raising, right? And and I, and those are valid valid questions to address. We can kind of present what we have, and then there's a lot of room and a lot of need for further types of analysis. Um, That's for the interpretation, right? It's in, for, in, in terms of who is not being aided how uh, any, you know, negative repercussions from these sorts of uh, expenditures. Uh, you know, we could, we could talk about, you know, present information about one expenditure, but if there's something that's not in the expenditure report, that's not going to be addressed. And so if that happens to be competing industries, well, they're not in the argument if, they're in the, if we were doing this through the tax expenditure report. Um, uh, so I, I think I, I think that covers most of um, of the provisions that, that are trying to be done in in 920. And, and, and I don't mean this to be uh, a list of what we can't do. In fact, we would be very interested in doing those types of analysis. That's that's why I, you know, went to get a PhD. That's, that's this is very very interesting to us. Uh, thinking about how uh, the distributional effects, the effects between businesses and consumers, uh, the, the, the effects of you know, one group against another and who is not affected, the, the issue of how many jobs are actually uh, attributable to the jobs tax credit and how many are just kind of getting a windfall, right? So, you know, that's very interesting stuff. And so academics... Uh, you know, around the state would, would be very interested in, in, uh, in, in looking, helping you look at those issues. But they're, they're not necessarily something that, that's going to be so concise that you can plop into a segment on an expenditure line for the tax expenditure report. Mr. Chairman, I have just one more question. And, and um, when I look at this and how voluminous voluminous it is and how much material is in here just trying to think of how this committee or another committee in the legislature could actually digest this and review it and determine what should be done in order to either raise revenue or better spend our our, our funds and there's been some discussion about the possibility of going to a two-year appropriation. I know that there are some states that do have a two-year appropriation, and so they pass an appropriation bill one year. The next year, they'll come back and perhaps do a supplemental if it's necessary. Mm -hmm. But on the second year, they actually sit down and evaluate their expenditures and make sure that there isn't waste, that they're getting the best bang for their buck, and they're also evaluating tax exemptions and credits and seeing where we can raise more funds. Have you, do you have any comment on the possibility of that ever occurring in Georgia? And whether or not you think it would be a viable option? Uh, I guess in, in, some, some, it's, in some ways it's, it's not necessarily my, my job to comment on whether that should or shouldn't. Uh, I think the tax expenditure report uh, definitely needs to be. I mean, that's why you have a tax expenditure report, is, is, is to see all the things 
that aren't being taxed, and some of them make sense, and some of them you're going, well, why are we doing that? And that's true of any state, right? When this happens, all the states are in the same boat, right? And the feds too. Uh, and so having a, some kind of systematic review, whether it's every year, every other year, uh, would be uh, a, a great benefit. And, and uh, because there is a lot, I could see some advantage of having, you know, having to do it every other year because you have a little more time. But you could also do it every year, but only do pieces of it, something like that. Um, but having a systematic review uh, is advantageous for any state government. And so, yes, I would advocate uh, that. And we would be happy to be a part of that if, if invited to do so. Thank you. Uh, I, I, uh, I, I think I've about finished. And so I, I would just like to close with saying that uh, we would be happy to address what we can and help, if asked, to, uh, you know, uh, modify the existing report so that it's more useful for, for your purposes. Given the, the data and the resources that we have, we would be happy to do that. Uh, the report is no good if, if it does not serve your purposes. All right. uh, but we would, uh, I would ask, in some cases, we would need some guidance uh, from lawmakers to do that, deciding purposes and, and how one would evaluate, on what scale you would like to have evaluation. Right. If there are any other, any other questions or anything? Comments? Dr. Wheeler, thanks for the good overview, especially for those of us that were new to the process. Uh, j just curious, uh, uh, how much staff's dedicated towards to this project? I'm just curious as to what your annual budget is. Nick and I. Two? <laughs> yeah. Put this whole thing of, together. Additional support well, that's true. That, that's true. That's true. So uh, Nick and I are responsible for many of the, most of the re um, estimates. We do contract out with some people. Uh, and then we, of course, are working within the Fiscal Research Center, so we have access to all the resources of the Fiscal Research Center. There's lots of data sources that we have to have. There's lots of computing power that we have to have to run those data sources and, uh, and expertise to model various things. And so we have access to all that, and that's not necessarily in our, in our budget. Separate, we just have, is there a separate budgeted amount for this? We receive, we yeah. receive budget, the, uh, money. Uh, for the fiscal year 12, uh, the amount of the pass through was $118,000. So that's. Frankly, not as much as I'd expected. Uh, <laughs> I, you know, uh, 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 do you want to, yeah, do you want to get the mic there? Um, <laughs> but. Uh, Careful work. Have you all. <laughs> we, we, are, we are happy to provide this service. Uh, um, and, and we do benefit uh, from all sorts of services. I, I should also say that Department of Revenue uh, does not receive a pass-through from audits. And on the other hand, does receive lots of phone calls and data requests from us for information. Uh, they're not able to provide all the information, but they do provide absolutely what they can. So does the Insurance Commissioner's Office. Uh, they have a kind of a set thing that they send to us that it takes care of all their provisions. Uh, and so they are happy to do that as well. And so we are not uh, alone in doing this, this project. Any questions? I, I would like to yeah. ask you, Dr. Wheeler, the, the last portion of, of the language, well, first of all, since we have May, and we talked about this in my office the other yes. day, um, since we have on line 16, the expenditure may include in the, these lists of things, it, it's something that we, we look at, or if it, we were passed, we, we would look toward working with you if I still occupy this seat um, at the will of the, the voters up in Alpharetta and, and the Speaker uh, when we come back you know, next year and over time. Is there anything in there that you just look on its face and then say that, hey, we can't do? Because I agree with you. A description of the tax um, or the objective of the tax expenditure, I mean, that, that's almost a partnership you need out of the legislative 
you know, branch. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's, it's a bit tough to ask you to reach down in the mind. Some of these things, I look back, 1964, one was put in place, and um, we could probably find Chairman Smyrie might No, I don't think even Chairman Smyrie was here, <laughs> was here in, in 64. But we can find that. Um, so, I mean, we, we could work with you on that, but I, I see line 17 and 18 almost being a, a partnership because I'm not sure that, that you would want to get into the water of – an analysis of whether the expenditure is meeting is objective or not, because in many cases that could be a subjective um, determination, could it not? It, it depends on how you how you set up the evaluation. The evaluation right? so if, on, on, how uh, you on a more sophisticated econometric, uh, you know, uh, more sophisticated empirical analysis. You could do so. That's something that's uh, much less political, much less subjective. Mm -hmm. But if we're talking something that's a little bit more based on some maybe anecdotal uh, evidence, uh, I would be a, a little concerned right. to make sure we were talking to all the right people. Sure. Well, and, and that's why I, I'll leave back, and then I think I'm going to, you know, as the author of the proposition, I, I would like to see us move this forward, you know, at, at some time, but I'm not going to um, ask the committee to, to take action on 920 today because after seeing this report, hearing what Dr. Wheeler has given us, I'd like for you to think about it because I, I think if nothing else, that this language has been in place. This was passed in, in what year, Russell? Was uh, uh, two years. I, I thought ten. it was ten. ten. Okay, that's what I wanted to say. But but I, I would venture many of our colleagues have yet to cast eyes on the tax expenditure report. So 920, you know, has. has wants to focus us back on that and if, if we need some actionable things by the, the house of representatives you know to put in there you, you you shall do this report and you know a committee of the house shall you know evaluate it and make a you know a presentation to something you know we, we can do that mm -hmm. because I, I just think we need to have a focus on these monies um and, and i understand the public out there when you start talking about toying with an exemption or, or an exp you know, a, a credit, you're in somebody's sandbox. I mean, you know, somebody that is getting a, a credit or an exemption, if you take theirs away, even if it, if you use that and spread out and lower everybody else's, they feel like they're losing something. But I think we need to focus on it. I mean, I think um, we, we can do that. So um, I'd ask the committee to keep that in advisement. And, and Dr. Wheeler, the last thing I would ask of you, and I'll come in, is, do you have the ability to to know the persons, corporations, or entities? And you, you can't in all of these cases, can you? Know not not only can we not. I believe DOR has restrictions on on how that information can be used. I have a couple of sites. There are, there are some privacy issues. Yes, to and they're and they're stated in the code section. So and, and, unless and we, you and that's the reason we say to the extent possible. Yeah. Uh, I, I think in in some cases. Um, but perhaps it was something that, that Representative Williamson brought up earlier is, you know, in the education credit, is it benefiting, you know, the person it was supposed to or somebody just getting it because? Um, but to keep that in mind. Mr. Chairman. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Dr. Wheeler, thank you for your presentation. And the question that I have is, is there any um, uh, communication, uh, collaboration with other states? Do you uh, share this information with them? Do they share this information with you? Is there a, a, a maybe in, instead of, a, of a, you know, how do they do it? Is there is there a more standardized thing? I mean, what are your thoughts? Uh, it's actually a very small community of people who do uh, who do this this the work that we do, and um, and so there's a there's a. A group of us and, and and so yes we do tend to know uh representatives or, or individuals from other states who do this type of work and we do talk you know uh maybe they have data on some provision that y'all are thinking of uh enacting we'll call them up and say you know what's your experience so we do that sometimes with the fiscal notes as well okay. uh and it's proved very useful there's a sharing of information uh between us and and so not only if I, I say information we don't share tax return information but you know well so and so implemented this provision and raised you know 100 million dollars or 10 million dollars that you know that was their experience uh and and we also share methodologies now uh to be to be honest and 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 perhaps uh the appropriate uh, credit be given to minnesota because 
everyone tends to copy the Minnesota tax expenditure report because it's, it's really, really good. And, uh, and, and I certainly did. The numbering system is completely out of their system. <laughs> and, uh, and, and so, yeah, we, we just call them up. When I was uh, preparing for this, I wanted to know how Oregon did their, their uh, these evaluations that they have. I, I know someone there. I call them up, and, and we're able to chat as equals and kind of uh, in a very informal sort of, well, how do y'all do that? Uh, th and that's very, very useful in a whole bunch of things that we do at the Fiscal Research Center, not just this, but yes, in this. That, that is something that, as we continue to, to publish this report, we'll do even more. The more we do this, the more we're learning who are our contacts at, at the state to get more information and, and other ways to do this. And, and like I said, initially, it's kind of a learning experience. Uh, I'd like to follow that up with, with, with uh, Chairman Martin's request with this, with this legislation is so that we can uh, better uh, prepare ourselves in the legislature on, on the benefits of this, on, on the tax expenditures. Have you got information from other states that you could share with us that would show what they have done? So if we're looking at particular uh, expenditure and seeing what the benefit is and trying to determine if this benefit is, is cost effective, if this benefit is, is producing the results we want mm -hmm. it to produce, if it's benefiting the, the people or industry uh, 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 that it is in, intended to benefit. Do you have access to information that could say, okay, well, the state of Indiana uh, did this or changed this, and they would be able to, and this is what their outcome was, so that we could have a more of a evidence-based uh, uh, idea of, of how to uh, move forward with this? I, I think what we could, could provide and be happy to do so is, uh, as you come up with that list, uh, we could, you know, go through each one and say, yeah, you know, so-and-so is a good example of how to do this, and this state's a good example of how to do that. Uh, I, I think everybody's tax expenditure report's online. Uh, if not, we can certainly get it. Uh -huh. Most are online. And, and yeah, we do tend to know um, uh, through experience and, uh, you know, through our little network of, mm -hmm. of Contacts. Uh, yeah, people. Uh, who's doing who's doing what and so we can uh, we can help provide that information super okay thank you Doctor, did you have anything in no conclusion? I, I I would just like to say I I, I uh, we think the the components of 920 are absolutely in the right direction right uh, and and we are we are not opposed to it my, my perspective was, as the person who actually puts it together, how would I do that? And so that was, that was my uh, direction and, and point of this presentation. Uh, and so the status of the bill is, is, is beyond me, but uh, we are not opposed to this. But what we are really uh, in favor of is working closely with you all to, be able to provide a document that addresses your needs, whether it's all in this document or if it's in another document, uh, we would be happy to, to uh, be involved in that conversation if invited to do so. Okay. Well, Dr. Wheeler, uh, I appreciate it, and I know that the, we're running a late of uh, hour. I'll let the committee go, but let, let me uh, just ask you this one thing. For our, our $118,000 uh, and change, as they say in, in, in the movies, um, I would like to ask you this. is You have uh, either have or can get a, a copy of 920. Uh, the report is out here. It has a lot of good information. I think what we, we could add a couple of things that would, um, you know, make it more compelling for, for somebody to, and, and I, I take no disrespect to the work you've done, but no, I mean, no. something that a legislator looks in and says, you know, that's costing us that much and it was supposed to do this and we don't need to do that anymore. 
I mean, if, if that makes sense. I mean, I use the, the old thing of, of uh, you know, a subsidy, you know, if it's bought on Wednesday when it's raining, but you pay tax on it if it's sunny on Thursday. I mean, there are things in Georgia code that are almost like that. If you go, mm -hmm. I mean, why should, you know, certain things be exempt? And, and you look over there and it, it, you know, something almost like it is not. Mm -hmm. And it's because at some point in time there was a compelling reason whether that was for community's sake or industry's sake or the fact that, you know, in 1964, you know, a powerful legislator just wanted it that way. I mean, let, let's, let's just be honest, and there are things left over. I, I was actually told there's a, there's a piece, uh, a law in the, the books in the city of Atlanta that one couldn't drive an automobile without a specific permit back from the days of when the, the old rail yard and uh, stockyard was here and it scared the animals. So, I mean, there are, there are laws that are left over. So what I would ask you this is to look at 920 and see if we need to move it around or if the, the May probably protects us from being okay the way it's written, but if we can make it better and do something that uh, makes that report even more useful and compelling you know overall and, and perhaps even an action uh, sentence in there for this committee or a committee to be a, mm -hmm. um, denoted by the speaker to you know take action on that expenditure report every two years it, you know no less than every two years and that may be a combination of appropriations and ways and means in this committee or none or all of the above I, i'd really be interested in in seeing that because i'm looking forward i'm not just looking for another header on top of each one of these line items and right. okay there's something else in there and it sits on everybody's shelf so I, I want something that, that is compelling so that there's action i mean there's billions of dollars in here that we're not taking out of the pockets of georgians and that's good but because we're not doing that we're taking more out of the pockets of other georgians and there may be a reason for doing that to promote our economy but i would just i'm just sincere and i think I'm joined by 179 people in the house that are sincere in wanting to focus on that and in this competitive world market um i think we need to do it so if, if you'd help us to do that and if the committee would to. indulge me i would like to meet and, and hear um uh house bill one uh house bill 669 and house bill 920 on monday with the uh, idea of taking action at that time any further business before the committee? If not, Dr. Wheeler, thank you, and, and thanks to the, your staff and the folks. Uh, appreciate everyone coming to stay in this late hour. We will um, meet after session on Monday. Please keep an eye uh, at your seat. We'll uh, get a note out later this week as to when that will be. If there's no further business before the committee, we'll stand adjourned. Without objection, we are adjourned. Yeah. Great report.